British movie title veteran Richard Morrison's body of work spans over three decades and 150 titles, including titles for well-known movies such as Quadrophenia, Hellraiser, and the first Batman movie. Richard is now a creative partner at the vibrant London-based animation and mixed media production studio, Thing One. I advise anybody, you, when you first meet a director or producer or whoever you're working with, you don't have to overcomplicate an idea to start with. I always remember the story that Ridley Scott, when he uh, did the first Alien film, um, he sold that film in three words, and that was Jaws in Space. And that got him the money to make that film. That tells you that simple is good. So follow me to the back studio where we shoot all our testing. Step this way. So any kind of model work or, you know, any prep work we can do down here, absolutely perfect for testing. Because I'm a great believer that once you've gone past the storyboard, <clears throat> the great thing to do is, is to actually make a little model. You know, it, it, it just tells you so much because it's a physical, um, object and the more physical you are with texture smell you're using all of your senses it's it's feeding subconscious information into you which all helps you know as you move through an idea it's that thing of going back to being a child and you get a piece of plasticine and you make a horse it doesn't matter how good the horse is it's the fact that you're engaged in that process if I've got a project that's suddenly come to me, probably the one thing I do almost all the time is not think about it. So I'll do anything that will distract me. And then eventually what happens is subconsciously the idea will start to come through. Somebody may say something or I may suggest something. And they, oh, that could be part of it. And then once you kind of calm down, then go back to the project and then start scratching out on a piece of paper. And um, again, by magic, some sort of thing happens. The old optical process, you know, it was very much kind of shoot it, wait till tomorrow, and have a look at it. You know, it's so it's a that's a great compensation, I think, with the digital world. We people who are darker than blue, are we gonna stand around this town and let what others say come true? As you get more and more experience, people kind of trust your judgment but I would never dive in and, and do sort of high-end visuals because what you're doing by that is you're actually stopping a creative process. You, you're almost putting all the colours, all the clothes on before you've had time to test it out. As <clears throat> where if you start with a drawn storyboard, anybody knows you can rub out a few bits and then, you know, collectively you add a few bits. So as the project moves on through its different stages, what hopefully you're doing is you're always building on it you know, you're not cutting off its lifeblood before you even start. So I'd always recommend you draw it. Midway through the process, once you've kind of locked off an animatic, then your production manager or producer can then clearly see, oh, this needs that bit of treatment, that needs that bit of treatment, and you, you, you know, you formulate it as a team. So that's why I'm saying you're allowing the thing to kind of grow and nurture as it, as it moves through. Um, because all the problems happen as you move through, because each title sequence is unique. So for instance, Sweeney Todd, there was a very, what I thought was going to be a really easy sequence with a meat grinder and the, and the mince is coming out, that was the hardest thing to do. So you would never have known that. You know, we, we tried to shoot it live action, it never worked. It ended up being stop frame animation because the mince just comes out, drops off, it's got no control over it. I thought it would just keep coming down. Of course it doesn't, it just drops off. So it's completely useless. 
technology has moved on so much now, you know, it does allow you, as we all know, it does allow you to almost create the impossible. And also to layer things uh, in a much simpler way, in one way. I mean, there's um, the big pulled back shot um, within the sewer, that's a whole big tank. So in order to get the perspective, you know, you can't cheat perspective on film, you've got to actually do it for real. Um, so that's a whole big water tank. You know, it's fantastic stuff. But you never know that until you engage in it. But you're always allowing space in order to compensate these things. And then hopefully they all add to the, you know, the finished, you know, part of the project. What I, what I thought would be quite interesting, because there's a lot of young designers here, young directors, I thought it was fun to actually share the experience. So although it wasn't a pitch, because Tim said, no, no, there's no pitch, Rich, you know, I'd like you to do it. I just thought it might be a good exercise internally just to see all the different ideas that could come up with inside thing. And we ended up with, I don't know, probably about 10, 12 ideas. And they're all relevant. I mean, they're all relevant for discussion. They're all relevant to look at and share. Um, and out of that um, came the narrative. So the narrative I just basically sketched out on two sheets of A4. Um, Shai, one of our other designers, he had a, he's got a very good kind of photographic -y background to him and he came up with a very good kind of textural colour palette of, of how these sort of buildings like behind us, how they could look. And it just basically took a whole bunch of ideas back to Tim and then just Tim and I just threw them all on the floor. Very quickly Tim saw, spotted the kind of naive pencil drawing which I like doing um, but he could see that I'd come up with a narrative idea. And to be honest, I kind of knew that that's what he would be looking for. He wasn't looking for a technique. He wasn't looking for a type style. He was looking for a narrative that would have some resonance to the film. Because Sweeney Todd is he's coming back to London after he'd been you know, cast away for however many years it was, as he comes back, he's almost subliminally thinking what he's going to do before he actually gets back to London. So I thought, why couldn't it not be some like surreal idea in his head? Like a dream sequence. So that was the whole idea of starting with blood instead of rain coming from the clouds. And then you basically, you just follow that blood pattern all the way through his location, all the way down to the sewer, where, the, where he disposes of all the bodies and out. So it's a journey of blood but it's a metaphor for the whole film. Yeah, still hot down here then? Yeah, yeah. We're now in the engine room. This is where um, most of the technology is. Um, so it's all compositing, animation, After Effects. So it all goes on here. Um, it's the bit I hate most. Because <laughs> I can't touch it, you can't feel it. It's already now inside something. So it's, it's more of a kind of, um, again, it's all down to communicating your vision and getting it across to whichever particular artist is doing what particular function. I think the technology is fantastic as long as you use it in the right way. Um, it won't give you an idea, um, but it sure will make things happen a lot quicker. I don't know, maybe, maybe the Batman, for instance. You know, maybe now you would do it more CGI, but I would doubt it. I still think you have to have that on film. You've got to have that physical scale, um, which I think is quite hard even now to do. But you, yeah, sure you can do it. I mean, look at Avatar, look at all the CGI films. They're just evolving all the time. Um, but um, there's nothing like a piece of old vinyl. I keep saying this, but I love the whole experience, you know, um, and I just hope that the technology doesn't suddenly start to drain off, you know, more and more of the whole physical experience. Yes, you're still going to come up with the idea, which is a great experience, but in the process of creating a finished piece, there's so much interaction, you know, with all sorts of people, which I hope doesn't go.